Hello, welcome back. Today the air quality is very poor, but the drone activity is only moderate. <laughs> uh, last time I had a pretty cool puzzle here where I made a sandwich assembler and uh, was one line short of greatness. So I went for something that wasn't so great and I think I can actually very quickly improve this. I want to spend just a moment here. Instead of putting this upstream of this, I'm going to put it downstream. I'm going to connect these together, connect this to an X bus, connect this to this, and I will need this to be on the flag. Okay, so is P0 the flag? Yes. All right, so um, the reason I didn't think of doing this downstream was because I was sure I wanted bread control to be exclusively here, but I can at the very least save some lines of code. I want to see if this helps... Uh, any of my other um, metrics here. Okay, so gen P030, that's the line that wouldn't fit here. Gen P1, 10 is also gonna go here. I'm also, okay, so all I need is, yeah, check this out. So I'm gonna SLX X1, gen P11, x1 to clear it so this instruction is over there now move 0 x0 so this should do the flag just the same this will sleep until this tells it to do something uh, 0 x0 oh, so, yeah so this tells it to do something the second bread will never be handled by this this needs no conditional logic because all it does is the last bread and the flag and that kind of makes a lot of sense let's do it Looks great, works perfectly. Okay, so I greatly reduced my line count and it's not impossible I helped my power usage too. Cost is the same. Okay, great, I improved my line count. Power usage is not visibly different. Yes, it is. Okay, right, so there are actual numbers here. I improved by 15, cool, all right, good stuff. It is possible to do it with less. I can kind of imagine that. Uh, but I'm very happy with this solution now. So I only had two more lines of overhead instead of uh, seven, six, seven, I think it was. Anyway, Carbine Target Illuminator. We have a deal to create a highly portable infrared targeting device, Carbine Target Illuminator. That's what it is. This name is sometimes different from that, yes, uh, that automatically switches emitter modes based on range. At long range, the aiming laser is on. At mid range, the aiming laser switches to half power and turns on a 20 degree flood emitter. And at close range, it switches completely to a 60 degree flood. I have placed a copy of the table on your desk. I'd been wondering what this gun thing was that I was seeing all the way down. I kept scrolling down to it. This here. Okay, so I'm going to be reading you in a moment. Uh, as a mounted add-on for any type of carbine weapon, it has the potential to do very well across government and law enforcement agencies. I'm going to nope right out of this one, if none of you mind. <laughs> he doesn't work. Uh, want to work on a uh, weapon system. I understand that. The character I'm playing has no such uh, reservations, apparently. Radar out is a simple input connected to a miniature radar unit that indicates when it fires a radar ping. Oh dear. Radar in is a simple input connected to a miniature radar unit that indicates when it receives a radar ping. What? Oh, I'm gonna have to measure intervals. Laser is a simple output connected to a variable intensity infrared aiming laser. Hmm, so not just zero and 100 maybe, variable intensity. Flood 20 and flood 60 are simple outputs connected to infrared flood illuminators with 20 degree and 60 degree beams. Measure the delay between the start of a radar outpulse and the start of the radar impulse that follows it to determine the radar range. Control laser flood 20 and flood 60 as specified in the carbine target illuminator range diagram, which can be found in the supplemental data section of the manual. Okay. That's fascinating. 
Carbine Target Illuminator. Don't let your operators get caught fiddling with rangefinder settings at the wrong moment. Today's aiming devices for individual carbine weapons often feature complex illuminators with multiple switches and dials, which can be difficult to operate in the dark or worse during an engagement. The PP221 eliminates these issues by automatically snapping to three predefined settings optimized for common engagement distances. <laughs> So zero laser here, 50% laser, right. Variable intensity, of course. 60 degree flood on, 20 degree flood on. So one to two, three to four, five to six. What about seven or more? Short range mode. I'll just assume it's five or more. For close quarter situations and room to room engagements, short range mode. Actually, no, for seven, it probably wants the laser off because that would mean there's just nothing there if the radar doesn't bounce back then you're like aiming at the sky or something. And everything should be off, I presume. Uh, I wonder if it tests that. I don't know, that might be one of those unspecified behavior things that I can make my electronics shoddier to be cheaper or handle for no good reason. <laughs> uh, good reason in the real world, not in the game. Uh, close quarter situations, room to room engagements, short range mode sets the floodlight to a wide diffusion to illuminate the largest possible area without wasting power on an aiming laser. Mid range mode, right, because you don't need a laser if you're that close, of course. Uh, for use in a wide variety of urban environments, oh, <laughs> the floodlight is adjusted to a narrower cone in order to project illumination toward the target area, while the laser point enables precise aiming. Long range mode, the highest power laser point with the lowest diversions used for outdoor situations or in situations with excessive non-natural ambient illumination. Okay. And then it goes to assembled meat. All right, uh, so that's simple enough. There's the laser. All right. So we got time intervals going on. That's fine. I'm going to start with one of these. I probably won't end with it, but I'm starting with it. Are these simple inputs? Yes. Uh, I would be more comfortable with those the other way around. So it's been pointed out to me that I can do this for wire routing, and that's going to be super handy. So that'll save me on bridges and stuff. However, I am just making my thing more inefficient. Like, why would I do this? This is just tidier. Uh, it's just that I want in to be the... Well, I want the first one to be zero and the second one to be one, but I can just deal with it the other way around. It's fine. Uh, so these are the outputs. I will need... All right, so it is a mandatory minimum of... Unless I would involve a DX300, which would be silly for this, it is a mandatory minimum of two microcontrollers here. Well, now, hold on. I could DX300 the floodlights. Well, no, I couldn't because I... Actually, I still don't have enough simple pins for this. These are all simple. Uh, okay, so I, I have five pins. I can't DX300 the laser, but I could do the others. So probably do this for Flood 20 and Flood 60. Yes, that absolutely makes sense, because it's just different values for whether those are, you know. Yeah, okay. So yeah, sure, the radar processor and the output mechanism. That makes a lot of sense. All right, so zero is the laser, one is the... Oh, and I don't even need the one anymore. All right, great. So what am I actually writing here? Uh, I can't SLX, you can. So that's your first instruction. You know what, let's have you... You're going to communicate the range number to this. TLT, uh, actually, move X0, ack. TLT X0, three? Depends on whether I want to make this 
I do. It's fine. Yeah, this will work. Uh, TLTX03. So I will make the numbers that come into this correspond to the diagram. I could do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it might make sense depending on how I want to implement this, but I think I will make the numbers correspond. So this counts as a 2. 60 degree flood on, laser zero. Okay. I'm going to need a larger one of these. I won't be able to fit all these cases in here. Because these are all individual. I need to make two outputs for each case. So that's three instructions per case. Already takes up the nine. And okay, yeah, I already need to replace you. Uh, pin type mismatch. Because that's an... No, not this one. Which, which pin type mismatch? P0 laser. What do you mean? Oh, no, no, it's you. You're a pin type mismatch. Pin is not connected, right, because that's now X1. And that's X1, and that's AC. Okay. Uh, I should be able to fit with this, I think. Uh, a TCP might actually be able to do it with this. Well, if I can, then I'll put it back to the other thing. Okay, but the simple way to write this, I guess, would be if you're less than three, then you're going to move zero, P zero. Oops. Uh, you're going to uh, move zero, zero, one, X two. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to TLT ACK 5. Ooh. Uh oh. I need to jump in here. Because otherwise, that would either continue to here or. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now I don't like this. But let's keep going with it, just in case. Maybe I need to normalize the value coming from here before it goes there. Like, negative 1, 0, and 1 for the three states. Maybe. I'll think about it. Um, after I see how this goes. Okay, so if we're in the 3 to 4 range, 50% laser, 20 degree flood on. Move 50, P0. Move 100X2. Jump loop. So this minus is completely unnecessary because it will never get here if that's false because of the jump. Okay. Uh, and actually, check it out. I can improve this by doing that. Okay, I like it a little better. Only needs one jump. Although, again, I wonder if it will test for 7 or greater. This test case doesn't, but maybe future ones will. I mean, it's unspecified. Unspecified behavior outside that range. So I'm going to take it to mean uh, this is 5 to infinity. It does specify 5 to 6, though, but it doesn't say 7 to infinity is not 100% off-off. Why didn't it say off instead of dash? <laughs> uh, okay, so move 100, P0, move 0, X2. I like to do this when it's a DX300 so that I'm setting like each bit individually. Uh, and yeah, those are zeros and 100s as expected. Okay, and then... Okay, so that's done. So if I can parse this in that amount of code, which I can't, but I'll try. I'll pretend that I can. If I can, then this will do that part. Okay, so hang on. So I have three... Three instructions to spare. Let's speculate. Suppose I could TCP. Hmm. 
Uh, so suppose minus one would be the laser. Or sorry, the laser. Um, suppose minus one would be this. Uh. I need one of these plus minus instructions in that case, don't I? Uh, plus one would be this case. No, this case. Oh, you need that. And then the neutral case is no laser and 60 degree floodlight. There is no X2. I'll just let you complain. This is just all speculative. So I have a line to spare, but I need two lines to spare to make this actually work, right? Because I would need a plus minus jump loop here. And I cannot plus minus, just like I saw with the bread um, sandwich maker. Otherwise, this would work if you were to normalize your output to that range, which mm, would probably balloon the size of this too much anyway. And since I can't even fit it here, then this is a pointless exercise, isn't it? By doing this, sure I have three instructions to spare, but I might have an oversight that requires me to fill those, uh, and also having this larger space allows this to be more compact. So maybe I'll be able to fit in here, maybe I only can fit it in here if I do this, and if I try to do this I would need even more space than 14. So... For now... Just in case I really want to explore that, I'll do that. I'll delete you when I make my choice. Okay, so you need to parse. Uh, Ack will start at zero, and that's fine. It, yeah, it started at zero, that's fine, okay. So... Oh, don't you need some dat, though? No, no, check it out. I know what I can do. Oh, okay, this works fine. So if I tech P, okay, so radar out. Tech P1 100, move zero ack. Uh, okay, so this is a two, this is a four. This is a five, this is a six, this is a six. Nothing happens. Hang on, is this a one or a two? I guess a zero would be if they both simultaneously ping. So this is a two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the only way for that to be within spec. Okay, great. All right, uh, tech P0, 100. Move ACK, X1, add one. Sleep one, okay. Uh, yeah, so the way this works is that... Um, and I have some spare instructions here. Mm, mm, if I could balance 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 total. <laughs> yeah, technically it's less than the 18 limit of two MC4000s. That doesn't mean I can fit it into two MC4000s. But technically, it kind of looks like it fits if I could balance the load. Uh, that's not how things work, though. Okay, so anyway, um, if 
the radar out has gone out, I initialize act to zero. So that's where I start counting. No matter what, I keep on counting, whether this has come back or not. Uh, when I get a radar in, then I send whatever I've counted over to here. It's that simple. There's not much to it. Flood 60 started at 100. Why? Wait, you sent something. Why? P1 100. Oh, well. <laughs> I knew something looked funny about this. Couldn't quite put my finger on it, though. Yeah, so that's not how conditionals work in this language. I mean, that's not how conditionals work in any language. I have to put some kind of token in there telling it. I mean, that's partially true in some languages. Just the very next line is implicitly part of the conditional. But that's never how I write code. Why would I write it that way here? Okay. So you do have to do a poll on both each cycle. I can improve this slightly. Yes, I can. Okay. So there's some micro optimizations to do here. First of all, Let's not check both at once. So zero is invalid. That's that's out of range. You cannot do a zero. Uh, I do always need to add what do I? Yes, maybe. No, yes, no, yes. No. There we go. All right. It's, it's a tiny saving. Uh, hold on, does this mess that up? I don't think so. Yeah, I think that all works. Okay, so let's go through this logic a little bit. Yes, I'm, I'm power optimizing, it's fine. So if radar out is sending a ping, then I start with a value of one in A. Oh, but then it's going to do this. So nope, this is no good. So I'd have to do that regardless. I will have to do that regardless. Okay, so I do actually need that in there. Uh, could I sneak a... Uh, I can sneak that in there. It's also invalid to have this happen two ticks in a row. I'm doing these weird micro optimizations here for like no reason. <laughs> Just because I felt like it's, I'm not doing that anymore. Because uh, this is the one that's polling. So optimizations here are where it's going to matter. Okay, so if I haven't even seen if this works. In fact, I've seen that it doesn't. <laughs> and yet I'm optimizing now. What am I doing? I... Uh, and now that I've started down this road, I need to finish. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I did make a slight error there in like my overall approach. Okay, so if radar out is pinging, then I start at one and I sleep. That's one, that's two. Yes. Uh, and I don't test radar in at the same time. If that didn't happen, then I do test radar in. Okay, so I only test radar in if radar out is not happening. Uh, so if radar in has come back with a value, then I move the accumulated value, which might be one if it's just done that, or might be more if I've added more. I move the accumulated value over here. Otherwise it adds one. Yes, yeah, so this is a tiny optimization here that skips the add one if uh, 
if I've just sent the value and therefore that value is now invalid. I can't turn it off, turn off the increment until I get the next uh, radar out ping. At least not without more instructions and that would be less power efficient, but I can save on one instruction when I send the value out and that's what that optimization does. And then I always want to sleep one. Okay, so I think this logic makes sense. I still think that makes sense. I didn't change it. So nothing happens first cycle. It did add one. That's fine. It should have. Technically it didn't need to because it wasn't in a thing, but it would take more instructions to express that. All right, so radar out happens. Ack is one. It already was, but it might not have been. And I wait. Radar in doesn't happen. So it adds and sleeps. Okay. So two time units. Going out to X1. You wake up. You pick up the value. And I do need two tests, so I need to move it here instead of just uh, TCPing or something. Hmm. If I'm jumping anyway, well, no, but I'd need to normalize here if I was doing such a thing. And like, I can't do a divide by two or anything. There's no divide in this language. There are no bit shifts the way I understand them. So yeah, like normalizing one to two to negative one or any negative number, three to four to zero and five to six to any positive number. Without branching would not happen, and I don't want to branch. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I once again talked myself out of the thing I discarded a moment ago. Because <laughs> for some reason that needed to be done. Okay, so it is less than three. We're in the one to two range. Laser's off. Flood 20 is off. Flood 60 is on. Okay, floodlight's on. Looking great. All right, I'm just gonna advance. Looks good, looks good, looks good. You're counting, it's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. You reset, waiting for a ping. Ping comes. Not less than three, yes, less than five. You get 50% laser, you get flood 20. 50% laser, flood 20. Get a ping, last case. Greater than four, uh, well, not less than five. Greater than four, yes. Uh, for integers, those are the same. Laser at full intensity, both lights off. Okay, it works. And it should be about as optimized as I'm going to make it. Okay, no test cases or testing anything weird. And everybody else, well, the majority of other people did the same thing. Ooh, look at this. Five, six, seven? Two MC4000s and a DX300. Okay, I'd believe it. Some real trickery there. Okay, cool. But you know what? I'm okay with this. Great. We did it! We made some kind of thing that goes on another thing that's made for killing people and helps them kill people even better! Yay, go us! Carl, I understand your concerns, but let's take this offline. <laughs> Alright, so he's like really not okay with our company working on this. <laughs> I understand. That's, that's very understandable. Okay, cool. Well, this is fun. <laughs> Let me guess, this one's from Joe. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe somebody else would use double punctuation. All right. Uh, yeah, so that was another one where I ended up doing a very conventional solution, I guess. I don't know. I felt good about the work that I did optimizing this, even if that was ultimately conventional. I enjoyed the process of, like, squeezing, just wringing this tiny little bit more uh, less power usage out of this. That was cool. All right. 
good stuff. I'll see you next time for something.